lion. The word of the Father. Forever. The same. Oh. Word of the Father. Forever you remain. You remain the same. Who is like unto you? Who is like God like to you? The Lord. Lion and the Lamb. Oh, Lord. Lion and the Lamb. Oh, amazing. The same. You are the Lion. Word of the Father. Forever. To do. Who is like all oh, to you? Who is like all oh, to you? Oh, you are the word, of the word of the Father forever. The same, the same. Hallelujah, 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 we join with the heaven singing, we join the angels singing, hallelujah, hallelujah, we join with all the same singing, 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 hallelujah, Join the heavens to say hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah is a heavenly language. We join the angels and sing hallelujah, hallelujah. We lift up your name, Jesus. Our hearts are waiting for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we declare hallelujah. hallelujah to the first hallelujah. hallelujah. To the first hallelujah. hallelujah. And to final amen. Day. Open our eyes, Lord. Let us see you face to face, God. Open our ears, Lord. 
let us hear from you today. Jesus, you say you will pour forth your spirit without measure. This is a day of the outpouring of your spirit. Our hearts are waiting for you. Our hearts are waiting for you. Oh, Jesus, rain down, rain down. Let bubbles come from our inside. Busting with joy, busting with, with joy, busting with bubbles of God. Men and alabo. We declare this place open. We declare this meeting open. We declare this meeting open as the angels ascend and descend. As angels descend from heaven. As I worship, rise, go.
Shala Leah, let it rain from the heavens. Let it rain from the heavens. Let your justice rain. Let righteousness rain. Let your judgment rain from the heavens, O God. We desire a shift in this season. We desire a shift in this season. We want to see, O God, the impartation of heaven upon the earth. We want to see the impact of heaven upon the church. We want to see the impact of heaven over our lives. We want to see the impact of heaven over the nations. We want to see the impact of heaven, O God, over the governments. Let it be by the reign of justice. Let it be by the reign of God from the heavens. Oh Lord, we cry, oh God, restore. We cry, oh God, restore. We cry, let it be rain, oh God. May our prayers and our prayers go up to the heavens. And let there be reciprocal rain, oh God. And let the heavens, oh God, respond to the earth. Let it respond to the cry of your people. We, your people, cry, oh God, from the face of the earth. We cry, oh God. We cry, oh God. Sins. Curve these caverns of our soul, find us to overflow. Spirit of the living God, come full of fresh and Come with me for my sins. Flow through the caverns of my soul. Fall on me to overflow. Let's do it together. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Come fall afresh on me. Come with me for my sin. Flow through the currents of my soul, falling me to overflow. Oh, 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 Spirit of the Living God. Blow 
through the currents of my soul, pouring me to overflow. Spirit breaker, break our walls down. Hey, Spirit breaker. Father, our Father, all of heaven, all of heaven, rose your name, sing it louder, oh yes, let this place hear us, can you hear it, can you hear it, the sound of heaven, the sound of heaven touching it, the sound of heaven touching it, Spirit break out. 
like a Russian. Come like a fire. Come like a fire again. Come like a Russian wind. Come like a Russian wind. Come like a fire. Come like a fire again. Come like a Russian wind. Come like a Russian wind. Come like never before. Come like a Russian wind. Come like a Russian wind. Come like fire again. Russian wind, come like never before. Come like a Russian wind, come like fire again. Come like a Russian wind, come like never before. Come like a Russian wind, come like fire again. Come like a Russian wind.
Every dish to bend the yandi, for who shall ascend upon the holy mountains of the Lord? Who, who is worthy to break the seal? Who is worthy to ascend upon the holy mountain of the Lord? Who is worthy to break the seal? For thou, Lord, ah, alikoto she, if free and Every art of Suvenen only you is worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you, only you, only you, only you, only you, only you. Oh, 
in his holy temple let every soul let every being be still in his presence he has come he has come in the hall of his power he has come in the beauty of his holiness thus says the spirit of God for the hall of the Lord the fierceness of his presence will be witness in the earth and I will restore the fear of the Lord in my holy temple and my church will be known again as a pillar of truth and a ground the ground and the pillar of truth a church will be known again as a people called by my name Ecclesia there will be people who govern and mediate to establish peace in the earth. A church will be known, my people will be known as people who legislate laws and establish peace and enforce my justice. For the Lord of hosts is taken out the worship of the graven images the great the worship of the golden calf for my people have been compromised because they have ministry has been a platform and an altar a platform in the ground where people bow to gold the merchandising of the gift of the spirit the ministry gift the merchandising of the anointing I will cause is to cease I'm coming in my glory I'm coming I'm sending forth my warning and it will be followed with my blow I will establish order I will I will cause order to return to my house I'm coming to set things in order for I'm raising 
an Elijah movement. The people who will stand for the truth. The people who will be consumed by the jealousy of the Lord. And they will confront the spirit of Baal and confront the priest of Baal. And they will restore and return Israel to Yahweh. I'm raising a new movement a new movement of saints I'm raising a new generation of ministers servants and handmaidens of the Lord yes. who men and women who have covenanted their soul to the Lord the Lord of us and the King of glory and I'm going to move through them and I'm going to move through them I sense the Lord saying to us, let's not get it wrong. I will rebuild my church. I will rebuild my church. And in the realm of the spirit, the process has begun of rebuilding my church. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back the place of reverence. I'm taking it back my church as, as an atmosphere of the spirit where the fear of the Lord is cultured. I'm taking it back, my church. I'm taking it back, my church. My church will be a, a training ground where men and women will be built to manifest the kingdom. I'm, I'm bringing back the wave of worship. Wave of worship. There's something about mammon. Mammon has perverted worship. Mammon has perverted the anointing. For thus says the Spirit of God, I declare a great deal of atonement upon the body of Christ. And there will be cleansing. There will be purification of my priest. My priest, my sons and Levi will be purified. And they will be washed. I will cause there to be laundering of the soul of my people. So that their sacrifice can ascend to the Lord as in the holy days. Thank you, Jesus. There's going to be the cry of my glory. There's going to be the cry of my glory. The cry for my glory. I've said no one cry restore. But I'm going to begin to create such hunger and thirst after righteousness. That there will be cry for restoration. Restoration. And I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. Times are changing. Times are changing. Priesthood is changing. Priesthood is changing. And I, the Lord your God, the Lord of hosts, I will begin to declare obsolete. Obsolete upon the priesthood of Eli. I will begin to declare obsolete upon the priesthood. Priesthood that is typified by Ophni and Phineas. Priesthood that have no fear of God, that defy my people. I have declared obsolete and a new day, a new dawn has come, a new dawn has come even the ark of the Lord has been stolen by the Philistines and they've presented and, and set the ark and set the ark aside in the, in the, in the shrine of Dagon but God says the spirit a new generation of priesthood a new generation, the Samuels are turning to the Lord the Samuels are turning to the law and supplication and intercession and prayers and worship are ascending. The ark will become potent again. The glory of God. I will begin to smack Dagon and smack the gods of the Philistines and the gods of this world. I will bring back the hall of my presence. The Shekinah glory, the cupboard of God, the weightiness of God. I will cause this to rest upon my church, says the Spirit.
Hallelujah. I believe I have a word for instrumentalists in the body of Christ. I hear the Lord say that in this new season, 2024 to be precise, I'm going to judge the sensual spirit in our instrumentalists. So far, talent, skill, and experience has been exalted. But the Lord God says that the spirit of God is what will be exhausted, ex exalted in the life of every instrumentalist that is in the body of Christ. No more will the sounds that come out of the body of Christ be sensual. No more will it be on the precedence of experience and skill. Yes, those things are necessary, but the spirit of the Lord resting on the heart of that instrumentalist or instrumentalist is necessary. And so if you're watching and you're an instrumentalist, I want you to say a prayer with me. Please put your hand on your belly because it is from the belly that you pray. You pray from the inside. You play from the inside. The spirit of God is like a wellspring that is, that is flowing on the inside. So place your hand on your belly. Do you play the, the keyboard? Are you a drummer? Are you a trumpeter? Whatever instrument that you play, your playing is not from your fingers. Your playing is not from your feet. Your playing is from the belly. So you hold your belly and you say, Lord, I surrender the instrument of my hands. I surrender the instrument of my mouth. I surrender the instrument of my feet. As long as you've called me to play a tool in your house, so will it flow forth from my inside. The sound of the Lord will come out. Glory. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, that, that, that one was a confirmation of talking about God judging entertainment spirit in the worship worship ministry worship and music ministries the Lord is restoring the spirit of true worshippers for the the, the the tabernacle of David is going to be rebuilt there's going to be the rebuilding of tabernacle of David and there's something about the tabernacle of David that is not about it's there are no fancy there are no there are no there are no rituals. There's only one furniture. It's the Ark of the Covenant. So it's not based on skills. It's not based on. It's not based on on musical sophistications, and all of the things that have been prioritized in the worship today. You know, but the Lord is saying, yeah, thank God for skills. Thank God for instrumentation. Thank God for you know, you know, uh, uh, top top range instruments musical instrument thank God for many other things but the Lord is saying it's not just going to be about about the sophistication it's going to be it's not going to be about the professionalism it's not it's it's going to be the heart of worship it's going to be the pursuit of his glory it's going to be the desire to want to see the glory of God restore to want to see the Lord revealed in the midst of his people and I, I sense the Lord is cleansing and purging and purifying and he's calling forth the sons of Korah and the sons of Jeturah and the sons of the true worship ministries, prophetic worship. And the, the, the worship ministry who will guard the presence of God. Who will guard the presence of God. Because the King of Glory, he is coming back. He is coming back. He's, he wants to occupy his place. He wants to occupy his dwellings. Let's just lift up our voices to the Lord. I, I want I want to respond with worship, right worship song in this hour. Yeah, and it's not really spontaneous sometimes. Shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name.
salvation shall praise your name. All my God, Almighty God, all The blood that you shed on the cross when you died for the sins of men, and you let out a cry, crucified our life in me. Oh, these ends are yours, Lord. The Zens are yours. Teach them to serve. Teach them as you please. Serve. As you please. And how rich I'm desperate to see. Desperate to see all the greatness of God. All the greatness of God. May my soul rest assured in you. Assured in you. Let's do it again from the beginning. Oh, you bought my life. You bought my life. With the blood that you shed on the cross. That you shed on the cross. When you died. You died. For the sins of men. For the sins of men. And you let out a cry. Crucify now a life in me. A life in me. In me. Oh yes, Lord, these ends are yours. That is a part of our service. Everything about us, we're serving the Lord. These ends are yours. These ends are yours. Teach them to serve. Teach them to serve. As you please. As you please. And I'll reach out. I'll reach out. Desperate. Desperate. To see all the greatness of God. May my soul rest assured. My soul rest assured. Assured in you. Hey, oh, I'll never be the same. 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 Be the same. Cause I know, cause I know that you, that you're alive. You came to fix this broken. My broken life, my broken life, then I'll see, then I'll see to, glorify to glorify your holy name, Jesus Christ. And I know, first I know that you are alive, that you are alive. You came to fix this broken, my broken life. Of my brothers, and then I sing to glorify your holy name, Jesus Christ. Oh, fire for the fire for the on us we pray. 
as we seek you. As a way of confirmation to some of the words that already came forth, um, while we started praying, I had a sense that the body of Christ, there was going to be an amplification of the Lord 
towards the body of Christ. And what that means is that there's going to be a notable transition in regarding the body of Christ. You know, in that instance, I saw a picture of a child. You know, when a child is trying to, 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 to walk well, you know, that stage of crawling to getting their foot, footings properly and to walking well. So it felt like previ- previously, you know, the, what the body of Christ has been doing was trying to walk, trying to stand, trying. There's just been a lot of staggering. But somewhere, the Lord is bringing stability. There's, there's, a, a, there's that transition in from like um, a child that is graduating from kindergarten to, to primary school, if I may put it that way. So there's, there's just um, that, that transition in for the body of Christ. I see the Lord um, accosting the, the bills. You know, the Lord is accosting the bills, the camp of the bills. And the Lord is bringing, the Lord is bringing to limelight the nameless, the faceless. The Lord is bringing a lot of those people. You know, those, those people, God has kept them at the backside of the des- desert. He's been training them. He's been, you know, he's been taking them through intense preparation. But we are going to witness a lot of them come to the forefront. And they are going to be very notable um, and diverse expressions of the giftings in the body of Christ. And it's not just going to be limited to, to, what's, to what is known in the sense of pastor, teaching, evangel- evangelist, um, evangelist um, the prophetic, the prophets and the apostles. We are going to actually witness um, diverse expressions that has probably not been witnessed prior. There's going to be like that very diverse, very unique you know, not that, that is a bit different from the norm. That is a bit different from from what we are used to. So you would there, there will be expressions of the things God is doing in these seemingly, you know, unexpected ways. So you could walk into a restaurant, and then um, a waiter can can carry out an expression of God. You know, while they go on that duty and somewhere people will be able to recognize it, that there is something going on here. There is a deposit of God. There is a gifting of God that is being expressed through this vessel that might not necessarily come as preaching and the like. So there's just going to be that diverse waves. It could just even be a bus conductor. We are coming into that harvest of diverse expression that is not the ordinary that is not the norm there's going to be so many of it like so so many of it um i also sense that the lord is calling the intercessors it was more like there was an alarm you know and the lord was saying intercessors wake up intercessors i'm calling you and i need you to midwife that which i'm doing now regarding the body of christ there's just so much amplification regarding the body of christ for the year 2024 god really has a spotlight and it's because i believe that we have come to the place of maturity i also sense that god is taking away the place of exclusivity you know that's 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 that thing that that might that might do with exclusivity where the body of christ is concerned where some people might feel they are better than the other i i sense god judging that and god is just saying that i just want i'm, I'm just going to walk through those who, who carry a pure heart all i need is purity of heart you know for any congregation for any community any assembly where i can find such i would walk through them and i'm judging exclusivity I want to confirm this word and maybe uh, complement it. You know, talking about the fact that we're going to see diverse expressions of the Spirit of God in this time and hour in the body of Christ. We're going to see Sometimes we're going to see the apostolic in a unique way. As a matter of fact, I noticed something today in, in the church. Everybody's an apostle. Every, I'm sorry, every decanary is an apostle. Everybody is an apostle. 
I sense the first apostolic has gone ahead. Apostolic is not a matter of call card. We're going to see, begin to see real apostolic ministries, you know, who are who are going to be uh, what what Paul called uh, 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 Paul called the apostolic. He called them uh, like architect, you know, spiritual wise master builders. We're going to see people that God will give the insight and the wisdom to help the body of Christ decipher the divine prototype. We're going to see apostles who are saint ones, who are grand breakers. They're going to break grounds of culture. You know, they will open up new frontiers in the spirit. I sense the Lord just wants, when we see the proliferation of apostolic office, is because the force is symbolic of the force. The force always go ahead. Yes. And we're going to begin to see the emergence of real, true apostles in the body of Christ. And I'm talking about unique operations of the spirit. We will even see apostles who will function like activists. They will stay conscious, the, 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 they will they will help restore the conscience of truth and justice. We're going to see different operations. We're going to see singers and musicians who are Christians, who are anointed, and they will be prophetic. Some of them might not even be your, God, your typical gospel singer. They will declare what will come to pass through their music. They will announce they will confront forces in the society and vibes in the society and set and stir up new consciousness in the society. We're going to see different operations. We will see fashion designers that will operate under the anointing. Like they will be like Bezalier, Bezalier and Oai, Oai Leap, who the craftsmen. We're going to see me, the grace and unction of craftsmen, craftsmen and craftsmen will operate under the anointing and intensity of heaven. You know, I just sense this, the church is about to experience such powerful appalling of the spirit. The church is about to experience the anointing is coming. The anointing, the anointing upon is coming. And the anointing will be pure. This operation of heaven will be pure. It will be pure. It will be pure. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is bringing many who are seeking the face of God. The Lord is bringing many who are praying and trusting God. They're trusting God that I just don't want the norm. I just don't want the usual. I just want that which was which is written in your word, that which our fathers experienced. We want to see the authenticity and validation of those things. I sense in the spirit, the Lord is raising that generation. And some of them might just be Jacobs. Might just be Jacobs in the spirit. Some of them are, are people that they just it's just like something is wrong with my life. People don't understand you. You seem controversial. When you tend to always swim against the tide. And the Lord is saying that from such ministries who don't comply with the norm, who will not just who will not just do things because others are doing it. And such and individuals too, who operate by convictions. And the Lord is saying, and, and, and you have been consistent, and you have set your hand upon the plow, you refuse to turn back. The Lord is saying, the hour of your breakthrough is now. I'm bringing you to Penuel, just like I brought jo I brought Jacob to Penuel, and I will meet with you. I will meet with you. I will meet with you. I will help you. I will help you. I will help you. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is saying, I'm going to help you. I'll bring you to the place of breakthrough. I will help you overcome the struggles. 
I will help you understand the seasons. I will help you, says the Spirit of God. Amen. Okay, I just feel that God is saying that. Um, remember the picture I gave you from the beginning where I appeared to you and I told you that you were going to clean up a lot of mess. And I feel that the Lord is reminding you of that and he's saying that I have made you a father. And you're meant to father many, 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 many ministries. And that I think God is saying that I'm, he's increasing your capacity for forbearance and he's increasing your capacity to love and for tolerance because it is time for you to step into that other aspect of your life you know you are a prophet to the body you're a prophet to the nations and god is saying that you have been on this path for long and that he's going to raise help for you so that you can step into the next phase to be a father and that he needs you to gather his sons and his daughters that he has made you father over so you can guide them and be open to them that's just what i sense Um, just to add to what Mama said, I I see the Lord saying that He's going to silence the mouth of the vile tongues that are silently speaking. He's going to silence them, and I see, you know, when a, a when a serpent, you know, that tongue that I see it being sliced off, and the Lord was He will silence them. He will silence them, and I am very angry in my spirit. He will silence them. Even those that you don't know, it was silent. They'll become dumb. They become dumb. They, they become dumb. They will speak and it will not have any force. They will speak and it will not, it will not make any impact anymore. Because the Lord needs your heart to be larger. He needs your heart. And while mama was speaking, I, I saw a tree, a very big tree, very flowery, very green. And I remember again that the, the word that the Lord gave us when we were praying on sisters connect that the lord will make you a very formidable tree like an hawk it becomes a place of refuge and shelter for people to come because many more the lord will bring to your house because the lord wants to make you an habitation you know even why the the the, 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 the worship was going on he said i come i would inhabit the lord will make you an habitation that people will come and will find rest even to the family, they will find rest. They will find rest. You know, people that has been chased about, that, has, that are running elter scatter, looking for a place for them to rest. The Lord will make you that place where they can come and they find succor. Amen.
to God. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we do not take the atmosphere of the Spirit for granted. We recognize it's your mercy. It's your love. It's your desire. It's all about you. It's got nothing to do with man. It's got nothing to do with us. It's got nothing to do with our consecration. It's got nothing to do with our, our devotion, our sacrifice. It's just your mercy. It's just your love for us, your love for your body. It's just, just about your plan and your purposes. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Doctor, uh, uh, let me confirm the word about the oaks. You know, uh, probably about two, three years ago, God began to speak to me about oak again. You know, using that as a metaphor maybe about two years ago and uh, a couple of years ago you know what year did we used to have thus year the Lord monthly 2011 a friend came to our meeting one of the monthly edition and then of thus year the Lord and you know it was gathering momentum God was speaking of our nations you know what's going to happen in the nation the Lord you know those of us were that were, were Pastor Emmanuel Pastor Monica Rume they all knew about it. You know, that year, the governing church were very known, but in the plan of God, God was using us as, as his, both his mouthpiece, or his oracle, and as the armor that was nailing the fulfillment. Because God wasn't speaking to us about what will happen in 20 years, 10 years. God will speak to us about the fact that, you know, uh, Russia, uh, was the, the Putin was going to change the constitution and he will, you know, he had become president and was gone. He would become prime minister, you know, he had done his turn. There was going to, there was going to be a relaunch, he would become a life president. And in no time, in the course of time, it happened. He came back after the constitution was changed and he became the prime minister. He's still the prime minister since then, you know, up till now. The Lord spoke about uh, uh, Gaddafi, that God's, God's judgment would take him out. And in no time. The Lord spoke about Arab Spring. Bagbo, the president, or president of Cote d'Ivoire, that your time is up. You know, it was Bin Laden. <laughs> I spoke about the summer bin Laden. Remember the details. He said the horn of Al-Qaeda will be broken. And Bilandi would be so it was like a year every month. The 2010 December. And Bin Laden was arrested 2011 February, I think. You know, God was just speaking. As soon as God would speak about something, and then in a matter of one month, two, three months, it will happen. You know, and that was so so in, in the cup that year, so this friend of mine came, he said, God spoke to him. He showed him a revelation and I should come and share it with me. And that I shouldn't be in Oreo because you are an oak in the spirit. So he then, it was one that drew my attention to the fact that he then went to study about oak and he shared some things with me. I then do further research. You see, before oak will bear, like using acorn as an example, it's an example of oak. Before it will bear it, your fruit, before it will bear acorn, it will take 20 to 30 years. That's to bear fruit. But before it will mature fully and bear fruit properly, strong fruit, it will take 75 to 100 years. And so by between 75 and 100 years, acorn will reach its height. That's about 100 feet. That's about 30 meter. That's when acorn reaches fully mature. But the only thing about acorn is that 100 years time is bearing fruit. 200 years time 
is bearing fruit. 300 years time is bearing 400 years time, 500 years time, 600 years, 700 years. The lifespan of an acorn is 750 years, between 1250 years and 1000 years. So I, I, I kept that. That was 2011 when God used this. So I, yeah, it was what I've always known that the journey will be long. <laughs> you know, but God, God used that to comfort and strengthen me. And, you know, and he, he's, been, he's been doing his thing and he's been maturing us in the spirit. Praise God. So please, you may have your seat. Uh, everybody, you're welcome to, you know, the fourth edition, I suppose, of TSL, Thus Yet Law. It's been a, a, a wonderful session of worship and, you know, outbreak of the spirit, prophetic, you know, uh, spontaneous dimension. And you're very much welcome to the presence of God. You know, there's a word that is burning in my spirit and I want to release it. I, I sense the Lord is speaking to those of us, those of you who are watching and listening, the Lord is speaking to those of you who have been waiting. You have been waiting. You carry prophetic pregnancy in your womb. That pregnancy, it might be a ministry, it might be a body, it might be a, a, an initiative, it might be an idea, it might be literally a child, you're trusting of a child bearing. It might be husband, marriage, it might be whatever. You have been through a long stretch of delay, of waiting. But the Lord wants you to know that delay does not equate denier. Waiting. You know, and for some of us, the Lord is saying, I will strengthen you to wait to the end. You will wait with grace. You will wait. In, in your waiting, heaven will sustain you. In your waiting, heaven will keep you. In your waiting, heaven will immune you from discouragement and depression. There's a spirit of depression that is eating the heart of men and women. And there's going to be, the, the rate, suicide rate will be on the rise. And the, because it's not normal, it's a false spirit that is taking out life, is taking out dreams, and taking out destinies, and taking out calling. But I just sense in the spirit, as you are listening, the spirit of the Lord is inoculating you with courage. The spirit of the Lord is inoculating you with strength, with might. The spirit of the Lord is inoculating you, is strengthening you on the inside, with the, so that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. The grace to wait and wait till the end. And then that Avon said, you will wait joyfully. You will wait with grace. You will see through the cycle of God's dealing and God's waiting. And you will, your, your eyes will see the fulfillment of the promise of the law. By just saying also in the spirit that those of us that are at the you are at the at the tail end. You are at the brink of something giving, breaking out. This is a year of your breakthrough. This is a year of your visitation. I sense that those of us watching and staying, you have been waiting and you can, the spirit of God can witness in you that, I don't know how you call it, when the pregnancy is at the advanced stage. You know, the advanced stage, the ninth month. You know, and it's like you're having signs that the baby is about to come. I sense that some of us like that, the baby is about to come. And, and some of you are not even having any sign. Nothing in the natural. But in the spirit, there's a nudging of the spirit. You know, you remember when the visitors, those three visitors visited Abraham, the angels of the law, and there was no nothing in the natural. Sarah was impregnant. Sarah was in, in fact, pray, Sarah was, has lost faith and lost hope and about to throw in the towel. But they came to Abraham. They were passing by to, you know, assess, have an assess Sodom and Gomorrah. And they just said, Abraham, by this time next year, your wife will bring forth. 
And Sarah overheard and laughed in her heart. Like perceiving my spirit. The Lord is saying, as the appointed time approaches, it's not even going to be about you. It will be about the sovereignty of God. Because you have faithfully waited. By this time next year, you will see the glory of God. You will bring forth nation. You will bring forth the promise. You will bring forth the glory of God. Because the Lord is saying, now is the hour. Now is the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we adore you. Take all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, I have a leading of the Spirit to talk to us about God's ageless kingdom. You know, it's sort of like a message uh, I, I ministered in church, at the governing church. That's the church I pastor by the grace of God. And um, this is just an excerpt of if it's an old message. I've just trust the Holy Spirit to quickly deliver a part of it that the Lord will have me bring. Uh, I will share the narration because I will need to read the entire, almost the entire chapter, or probably, you know, from Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 25. But I'm not going to do that, you know, or, or more. More than that, the, the entire chapter. I'm just going to read a particular verse. But before I do that, let me share, let me just narrate what the chapter is about. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, but God made him the king over the nation, the known world. He was the emperor that presided over the known world of the time. The leading civilization of that time was Babylon. And uh, the king slept and had a dream. And when he had the dream, he totally forgot the dream. So he needed to be told. He needed his dream to be narrated to him. Uh, but something felt that dream eat him up. He felt it wasn't an ordinary dream. So he needed somebody to both narrate the dream and then share the interpretation. So he requested that all the magicians, astrologians, soothsayers and spiritualists and his advisors and wise men should convey. And he told them that he wanted them, he needed them to share his dream with him. He had forgotten and then also the interpretation. And all of them battled with that. They felt nobody ever raised such a request in their whole life. Interestingly, a few times I have experienced that, that the Lord will use me to speak to people that you have this dream and he will give me the details of that dream. A few times I've experienced that. There was a particular time, you know, my, my uh, godfather, before the Lord took him home, and the Lord used me to talk about is the dream he just had the previous night, you know, in a, a small meetings where there were, you know, men of God and prominent people. Yeah, when I say prominent people, mature people, uh, 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 a couple like Professor Ababa was there, a mommy Ababa, both of them are late, have been with the Lord, you know, and then the Lord used me to share, you know, if just a couple of us, you know, where some of us who, are, who were there are still alive, not only aged people. They, they went home to be with the Lord. God took them at a very old age. So a couple of us that were there are still alive. And the Lord used me to share in details almost every bit of, of his dream. So there are a couple of times that God does that. So the king Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and uh, nobody could share it. And the people were requesting that you tell us the dream and we tell you the interpretation. He said, you guys are smart. They want to play a quick one on me, a fast one on me. I'm not telling you the dream. And as a matter of fact, I give a specified period of time. And over this specified period of time, you don't give me the dream. You don't tell me the dream. And share the interpretation. All the wise men in Babylon will be taken out. So he sent the executioner to begin to, you know, uh, uh, kill and all the wise men. Of Babylon. Incidentally, Daniel also occupies such position because he had been appointed as an advisor to the king. So he, he, he then asked for a favor that the, they should hold the fire and not yet, you know, execute the wise men in Babylon and give him a short time to go and seek the face of the Lord. Daniel did. 
and broke through in the spirit. Now, the focus is of this message is not exactly the content of the dream, but the process to God downloading the dream and the interpretation to Daniel. Now, of course, let me just quickly go through this. The dream itself, he saw a massive, gigantic image. And that massive image with specification in terms of height. And uh, the, the, I think the most important thing is the fact that the head was consists of gold. And from Daniel's interpretation, gold there represented a leading and ruling empire of the time. Very powerful world empire, which was Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar was the emperor and the king set over Babylon. Then subsequently he said, the chest and the and the uh, arm, which was made up of silver, represented a kingdom that will come. This kingdom will be consist of two expressions. There will be two kingdoms joined in one that will be less powerful to that of Babylon. And of course, it was it was Medes and Pash and Persia. Persia, Medes and Persia that came after Babylon. Then he then also said after the chest was the belly, the belly and the thighs, that the belly and the thighs were made of bronze. That bronze, that was another kingdom. And we also know that the kingdom that came afterward it was, uh, you know, Greco Macedonia. That was. Uh, spearheaded by Alexander the Great. And, you know, he also joined two kingdoms together and ruled the world. Then we add the knee, no, not the knee, the legs. The legs made of iron, which was uh, Rome. That was Rome. Rome too was actually, uh, Rome eventually split into two kingdoms, the Eastern and the Western. You know, the, and the, the, that, those were the two expressions or rather that carried that empire. And then finally, we have the feet. And said so the feet was a mixture of iron and clay, which was, which represent fragility. It was weak. And uh, we, we also know that that feet, that is where we are today, which is democracy. You know, democracy, the present civilization is weak, you know, because it's been, it's been, uh, what's the word? Uh, the, the, it's garnished with and, and has entrenched itself in woke culture and warped ideologies, you know, just like United States of America, which is the superpower of our time. Just imagine superpower now le legalize transgender and homosexuality. So you then have men who are in the military having sex change, you know, procedure. And definitely, what, what fight can you fight? What strategy of war? You know, uh, one of my daughters that schooled in one of the you know, Western world, you know, uh, and, and to share with me that they had, they went for a particular duty um, in, you know, they were providing oversight for high school children. It was a camping during holiday. And uh, she didn't even know that the people that made up her own team were, uh, she thought they were just ladies. She didn't know majority of them were men. You know, I use the word men, trans, biological men. And she had no clue. She thought we were pretty ladies, you know, and she didn't know they've done until one argument broke out and she then realized that biologically they were male. 
And uh, but what was shocking about Aya was that all of them had horrifying or experiences, and they were very young, 1920. You know, one of them has had heart attack about three, four times. She survived. At is it she? I, I choose to call her he. You know, he survived heart attack about three, four times. And then right there, when they were there, another one's spouse had heart attack, you know, and was in coma while they were there. So that's when she then realized that some of these procedure and medications had severe side effects. So now, how can you be in the military and be entrenched in such, you know, uh, activities and you'll be strong definitely you can't be strong so that is where we are today that the present civilization is weak because of entrenchment of work culture and warped ideological framework you know and, and, and mentality so let me not get distracted you know and let me not get too much into all of that but the important thing is that okay so i haven't set that foundation so let me read the relevance the most relevant scripture to what we are about in daniel chapter 2 verse 44 daniel 2 44 the bible says and in the days of these kings shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. That is, the kingdom of God will swallow up all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Now, the final bit, the last bit of, of, of the dream concerning the image of that God showed Nebuchadnezzar was that there was a stone that was triggered. The stone was thrown without a hand. And it hit the feet. And the old image crumbled. And God was showing the Nebuchadnezzar the end of the age. That there's going to be total collapse of this present civilization and era. But he threw it all. You know, when that stone crushed the image, then the stone began to expand until it filled the whole earth. And that is the ageless kingdom of God that is going to infiltrate the systems of this world. And it will do so through his people who are faithful, his people who are yielding, his people that the kingdom is taking over. You know, sometimes the kingdom taking over you is not easy. Entering the kingdom is not easy. It's not a bed of roses. It takes, the Bible says, how many, through many tribulations, we shall enter the kingdom. When the kingdom becomes ingrained in your mentality, your thought pattern, you can't cheat, not because you are not smart, but simply because the kingdom constrains you. And God is raising such quality of people. He's raising such people as pastors, as teachers, as, as, as you know, prophets, apostles, as professors, as husbands and wives, as kids, as children, as God is raising such quality of people whose allegiance will be to the kingdom of God. So, one of the things I would draw attention to is the fact that the Bible says in the days of those kings, the Bible says the, kingdom, the, the God of heaven is setting up a kingdom. So two things. We're living in that season of, you know, prophetic conflict. The kingdoms of this world and the kingdom of God. Praise God. We're living in a time where we're going to see that in the days of this king, you know, uh, 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 emphasize. He's talking about international cooperation, international diplomacy, League of La Nations. We're going to see nations come together, having a common front. What may bring them to, have you noticed something? That there's been, 
increasing support from the civilized world for terrorist nation. I'm talking about terrorist leadership like Hamas. And you'll be shocked for the first time, like never before. In New York, there has been movement, there has been, you know, protests in support pro, pro Hamas. You can't believe it. In New York, in London City, and it's massive. So we're seeing in the days of these kings happening. First of all, I, I mean, again, or second of all, if you like, you know, the, the word king in the Bible is taken from the word melek in Hebrew. It simply means royalty, reign. It means to consult. It means to take counsel. It means to ascend the throne. When the Bible says the Mosai is setting up his own kingdom, the word set up yeah, means it's taken from the word kum in, in, in Hebrew. It means to have, to gain insight, to develop depth, to have solidity of character that makes for longevity and posterity. So, and we, when we say the most high is setting up his own kingdom, it's not a physical activity. So it simply means that he's building a people who have the solidity of character to ensure or sustain longevity and posterity in the earth. A people who will not, a people who will be long-spirited, you know, and, and that, that's a kind of quality of people. And the Bible says uh, his kingdom will not be destroyed. The kingdom of the Lord Most High is set to them will not be destroyed. You know, the word destroyed is taken from the Hebrew word cabal, and it means not susceptible to compromise. It means not subjected to the ruination. It means not to cave in to the weight of pressure. And that's the nature of the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that kingdom will stand forever. The word forever here is taken from the word olam. It means perpetuity. It means ancientness. It means enduring. It's a symbol of that we gravitate towards the ancientness of the invisible God. It's a symbol of God that which draws its essence and definition from the world to come. It's a symbol of God that which connect to the origin which is the beginning, you know, that is your reality. You're living from the dimension of the beginning, not what has been adulterated, what, what man has messed up, but that the authenticity as by the ordination of God in the beginning. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So the Lord is creating agitation in the heart of kings. And when we talk about kings of the earth, it's not just talking about natural kings, presidents. We will have to look at kings from different application, from prophetic application. The work, the, actually, Nebuchadnezzar means protector of the crown. That's the meaning of his name. The people that God has given authority to ensure that mankind is rescued from destruction, to make sure the authority and influence and wealth is to help and cater for the well-being of humanity. But what do we have today? We have kings using their wealth to hamper the well-being, the health, and the civility of humanity. Just to gain, to become richer and become more influential. May I, may I, you may be shocked to know that things like the pandemic, like like. Uh, uh, COVID-19 and many other atrocities that have happened to the world, you might be shocked that it's masterminded by individuals. You might be shocked that some of these things were not just an accident. They were not by accident. They were masterminded by individuals to manipulate and control, to gain upper hand over the larger world and sometimes to, to, to enrich just for self-enrichment, you'll be sure. And I'm not. I'm, I'm going to be truthful to you. There are a whole lot of things that we see in the tech industries that you could see that this is nothing. The uh, protector of crown are not being fair and they are not being accountable to the God who entrusts authority and influence and technology to their hand. We see the, uh, what do you call it? The big farm, the big farmer, the big farmer. You see, that, I think that's the worst kind of evil. 
God might give you technology for automobile and for mobile, mobile technology. But when we talk about human life, some of the outbreak of autism are as a result of people playing pranks and self for self enrichment. Some of drugs that have severe side effect and is to mislead and deceive the world. God's judgment is coming. Amen. So when we talk about kings, some of the kings, you know, I like to also look at it from the angle of, you know, global leadership and uh, captains of industries and CEOs. If you look at uh, Google, uh, uh, owned by Alphabet, the mother, you know, Alphabet is the mother company of Google, and uh, you know, uh, started by, funded by Larry Page and Sergey Brin. You know, the the market value of Google is about one point six seven trillion dollars. Apple, you know, Steve Jobs was the founder. Now is it Tim Cook? I hope Tim Cook is still the CEO. You know, Tim Cook. You know. Apple is worth about $3.1 trillion. Microsoft, you know, founded by Bill Gates, is worth about $2.5 trillion. Facebook, with the founder Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Facebook is worth about, I think the market value for Facebook is about $819 billion, if it still remains. $819 billion and about over almost 3 billion people are on Facebook. You know, which nation is that big? You know, the level of influence, Twitter, you, you know, YouTube, Zoom, you know, United Nations, then we can look at the EU and look at uh, WHO. But, you know, I never knew that public health, you know, uh, uh, is such a big thing, my uh, the public has its issues. I mean, it's becoming the most phenomenal, you know, global entity in the world today. Praise God. So, in the days of this king, the sovereignty of the Most High is going to be revealed as a governor among the nations. He's going to. He has appointed leaders over the nations, over the larger world, to protect the crown. Use that authority and leadership to save life. But what we have today is the opposite. We must know that God himself is the epitome of authority. He has given leadership and government and authority to people to save life, like I said, not to oppress. It's not meant to usurp influence and usurp oppression over the people. So we're living in a time when the Lord is going to begin to, we will see accountability, everyone's scrutiny over leadership and authority. You're not going to just jump at it, authority, and because it's not a means to self, you know, uh, becoming wealthy or achieving your personal ambition is got to be used to save lives and to build and affect people. Now, one of the things we're going to begin to see is that the Most High will begin to initiate mysteries at the corridor of power. It will begin to arrest the spirit of global leaders it will begin to draw their attention. It will begin to tear up their soul. It will begin to trouble their spirit. Some of them will lose their sleep. Like Nebuchadnezzar did after he had the dream. Some of them will encounter the Lord. And they're going to lose their sleep. Some of them, even we sovereignly create conundrum around their economic, around economic indices. And they will be forced to seek the law. Some of them, God will sovereignly induce apparition and hallucination across political spectrum. And the Lord's most eye will show up 
some of them will be crossed in between political tension and, and friction, you know, that will pressurize the polity and they will be forced to seek the face of the Lord. Praise God. So like he did with Nebuchadnezzar, he sent him a dream and that dream arrested the spirit. God is doing the same thing to kings, the kings of the earth in our time. And uh, what's going to be the implication of that? The end of the age is marked as an hour of divine confrontation. Magicians, astrologians, and sorcerers of Babylon, wise men, spiritual personality. The Lord will have them com be confronted with, with the challenge of unraveling mysteries. And the Lord will be the code behind the mysteries. So when the Lord is the code behind the mystery, you cannot decipher it without the Lord enabling you. There will be complexities. What's going to happen is that astrologians and sorcerers and soothsayers were living in the time where heaven will shut the second heaven. The Lord God of heaven, the sovereign Lord, will shut the second heaven. And he is going to take out astral communication. He will judge the spirit from where they are feeding from. Because he is going to reign in the heavenlies. Praise God. We're going to see the judgment of God. It's going to be the act of God's judgment. People will manipulate the heavens and manipulate the stars and derive and derive powers and invite activities of foul spirit. The Lord will shut the heavens and he's going to shut the heavens over false prophets too. And people that fabricate miracles and fabricate signs and wonders and false prophets who prophesy profane and lies in the name of the Lord. The Lord will shut their heavens, all their gimmicks and tricks. Heaven will expose and unmask it. And there will be scandals. There will be disgrace. People that invent lies in the name of the Lord. The Lord will shut down their lying tongues. Because we're living in a very severe time. Heaven is reprimanding, is reprimanding spirits that torment nations. There's, there's contention and conflict over the souls of nations. You know, awful spirits that have damned uh, and create barricades against the intensity of the hunger and thirst after righteousness. Even in the church, false spirits. Heaven is sentencing them. Foul spirit that debilitates the relevance of the body of Christ in the earth. The Lord is judging occultic powers. The Lord is judging, you know, uh, 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 satanic spirit. Their political, uh, you know, activities and manipulative spells over the nations will expire. We will see the hand of God. We are going to see the glory of God. Then at the same time, heaven is raising kingdom arrowheads. He's raising people that will spearhead the move of the spirit like never before. He will begin to give proximity to those that he has effectively prepared, that he has set up aside. People who have sought his face, that the Lord is revealed to who have been faithful in the, before the Lord, before the face of the Lord, the Daniels of our time, who have sought God, who have not defiled their soul. The Lord is setting them aside. But the, but the time is about time, says the Spirit of God. He will begin to give proximity to power, proximity to the throne, to Daniels of our time. Gradually, we will begin to see opportunity meet with preparation opportunity gradually it will see unfolding uh, of I mean excuse me opportunity unfold in order to meet with preparation to fulfill the agenda of heaven it is called the era of manifestation of the sons of God the sons of God will be revealed so that's, therefore I want to encourage you don't give up continue to 
seek the Lord and invest in knowing Him. Invest in towards spiritual, gaining spiritual enlightenment. Invest in research. Invest in self-development. Continue to invest in gaining education in relevant part and field of life. Invest in acquiring exposure. Invest in developing your inner man. Invest in harnessing your gift, the gifting of God in you and activate it. Invest in the spirit of God, yielding to the spirit to restore your identity. Invest in concretizing your conviction of kingdom values. Invest in allowing the spirit of God to consecrate and sanctify you so that you will be his habitation. Invest. Invest. The time is coming. God's hand will rest upon you. The seal of the Lord is coming upon your forehead. And the nations will seek you. I said nations will seek you. Nations will seek you. Nations is going through this disintegration. Nation is going through collapse. Nation is going through shaking. In this hour of conundrum, in the, uh, at the hour of conundrum that is coming upon the earth, the Lord is going to elevate his own people. He's going to elevate the people who have been faithful. The called, the chosen, the faithful. It's about time for Daniels to be, for the Daniels of the law to begin to occupy the front line. It's about time that the Lord will begin to give to his Daniels. He's going to begin to give them proximity. Praise God. Be even with the even. It's about time. It's about time that the Lord is releasing grace to engage kingdoms. And grace, you will father kings and father pharaohs. You know, the interesting thing is that what God is doing, the Lord is raising a company of people who will speak the truth. They will speak truth to powers. Amen. It's given so that these people are people who are emptied of self. These people are people, the Lord has given the anointing and the authority upon you to speak truth to powers. What will happen is that, you know, your, 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 the Lord is creating such connection with personalities, personalities that are decked with diabolical powers. But yet you will not, even though you will have, you, God is going to cause you to interface with them. But yet you will not dance to their tone. You're not going to dance to the tone of the kings of the earth. You know, and that's why you've got to be Daniels. You will not, you will not, you won't bow to their gods. You've got to be an individual that has got backbone. You've got to be an individual that is radical in the spirit. You have developed spiritual capacity. You must be secure in God's love. You must be able to maintain your identity in God. That will make you not to waver to the right or waver to the left. You don't joke with your allegiance to God. You must come to that place of conviction and the place of sincerity, a purity of the heart. The, what brings us to that place is that we daily lay down our idols. We daily surrender idols of ambition. We surrender idols so that the consecration of the Lord will enable us to retain our nobility in the spirit. So our dignity will never be stigmatized. And that is what the Lord is doing and the quality of people is raising. And finally, I will say this. Daniel recognized. You see, in order for Daniel to have open heavens and penetration in the heavenlies, it was necessary that he did not stand alone. Daniel, when he got this order, went to look for his companions. So the question is that, who are your companions in the spirit? 
who has a spirit, the word companion, in, you know, when the Bible used the word, he went to look for his companion. It's taken from the word kaba. Kaba means united. Kaba means joined together by kindred spirit. Joined together by covenant. Joined together by kindred spirit. So the question is, who are the people who are joined together by your key, by kindred spirit? Who are joined the kid together with you by kindred spirit? Who are those people? Who are the people that share your convictions? I'm talking about accurate, based on accurate perception of the mind of God. Who are your people that share your belief system? based on accurate perception and placement of God's will. Who are the people that are driven by the same sense of purpose as you? People driven by the same content of conviction. So it is time to close rank in the spirit. We are at the battlefront. People who share kindred spirit. You can no longer stay at your comfort zone. You can no longer remain in isolation. It is time to close rank in the spirit and synergize. Then, if we stop operating as lone rangers, then we will experience breakthrough anointing. We will cut through the conundrums of our time and begin to decipher mysteries and be the solution to the complexities of our time. I'm calling for the Daniels. Oh, Daniels, rise up. Come forth. Come forth. Oh, Daniels, who, those who love the Lord, who, whose heart have been sold to him, people whose soul have been circumcised by the word of God, I call you forth. I call you forth wherever you are. No matter how young you may be, no matter how old you may be, I call for the Daniels who have been in the wilderness, who are who have been kept by the Lord, by the finger of God. It doesn't matter. You've been sold, you've been taken into slave, slavery. It does not matter. But knowing that first and foremost, you are the Lord's bond servants. I call for the Daniels. It is your time and the hour of showing forth. When the glory of God will radiate through you and the ageless kingdom of God will manifest to be seen through you, you will be used of the Lord to midwife his kingdom for the whole world to be whole. We're living in a time of chaos. We're living in a time of trouble. We're living in a time of confusion. But you will be the lighthouse that will bring salvation and stability to the world. You will be the eyes of your generation that will bring stability and safety to the nations, says the Spirit of God.